everyone, Lou here. Many of you don't know, both old and new viewers watching this video, but I'm actually a huge fan of crossovers. I love the idea of crossing over series, and it's actually just a really fun subject to me, especially from series that match up really well together. That's why today I'm going to talk about some anime series that have really awesome crossover potential. <laughs> For this video, I'm gonna go the extra mile and give a little fun idea into how these two series would cross over and maybe what would happen during it. Just to add some extra fun instead of saying why these two series would blend well together. Massive spoilers for all the series I'm going to talk about as well. Mad Father and Black Butler. Although Mad Father doesn't have an anime as of yet, it does have a light novel and let's be honest with ourselves that Mad Father has a very heavy anime inspiration. From the basic plot of Mad Father being an homage to the Death Buster story arc from Sailor Moon, Ogre is clearly a reference to Sebastian, and Robin's original name as Dio in the game files for the original version of Mad Father, the anime inspiration is very obvious. Plus, I have a feeling that Mad Father will probably get an anime adaptation someday for some kind of anniversary. I mean, if Corpse Party and Angels of Death can get an anime, then maybe Mad Father will too someday. Anyway, it is kind of weird to explain how Aya and Maria would go from Germany to all the way to England, but maybe you could say they were running away from the entire country to get as far away from the Drevis family tragedy as possible. Either that, or during the Greenwich arc, Ciel could end up meeting Aya in his investigation. Seeing as Aya has experience with corpses coming back to life, it'd be cool if Aya takes a similar role to Siglinde, except in regards to information on the supernatural instead of science like what Siglinde is for Ciel. She could explain to Ciel the science and improvement of Bizarre Dolls, and I can imagine in this crossover you just switch out Ogre for Undertaker in this case. Bonus points, by the way, for Undertaker bringing Alfred back as a Bizarre Doll who researches for Undertaker because that works surprisingly well. Aya and Ciel would be very interesting characters interacting with each other. Even though Maria states that Aya is very shy around boys, I can see her opening up to Ciel as maybe he reminds her of her mom in some way and maybe Ciel opens up to her as her shy nature reminds him of himself when he was younger. It would be especially interesting when the game implies that Aya does end up as a sociopathic murderer like her father, so it'd be interesting to see Aya hide this tendency from Ciel, and in the end, maybe when real Ciel shows up, she confesses that she's actually been experimenting on the dead as well, and could end up working for real Ciel, so she has an opportunity to kill and experiment on the dead like her father. Although if you think about it, Black Butler and Mad Father wouldn't really work because of their different writing styles, I say a crossover between them would actually work surprisingly well and be something fun to see in either fan art or fan fictions. Baki and Jojo's Bizarre Adventures. I recently got into Baki as I'm writing this video. I did watch the 2018 anime and Onward first though because literally nothing really suggested there was a 2001 anime in the first place, but it's fine. I'll go back and rewatch it eventually. Anyway. Baki is clearly a series inspired by part 1 in particular for its love of bodybuilders, overly masculine characters, facts you can tell the author found from a Snapple cap, and over-the-top fight scenes. It's pretty much the same writing style as JoJo's minus the obscure 80s band references since there's nobody named Mr. Van Halen in Baki. Story-wise, Baki is obviously far from being similar to JoJo's in any way since the story is mainly about Baki trying to surpass his father because he's a dick, and JoJo's is about guys and girls with clear daddy issues beating the shit out of the biggest daddies of them all. Also, timeline-wise, it's really confusing because the closest characters that would work well in JoJo's are teenagers in 1987, and I think Baki takes place in 2002. Something like that anyway, because Baki's timeline is just all over the place and makes no sense. 
to a point where you have to face facts that these characters are so strong and manly now that they became immortal or something. Anyway, I can still see a crossover working though. If you want to play up the fact that Baki could take place literally anywhere, I guess Baki in part 3 works best because I can absolutely see Jotaro and Baki becoming best friends. Think about it, they're both angsty sassy teens with clear daddy issues. These dudes would be absolute bros and making hell for everyone involved. Obviously Baki doesn't have a stand so technically he wouldn't be able to see one, but I still think he'd learn something from Jotaro's fights with stand users. Hell, Baki is so strong with his imagination that he can fight an imaginary 6 foot tall praying mantis so is it really that crazy to assume Baki can't fight a stand when he can't see it? Though I could only really see Baki in a hypothetical part 3 going with Jotaro for Egypt for the sole purpose of wanting to fight Dio in his quest to become the strongest man alive to beat the absolute shit out of his cartoonishly evil dad. Although Jojo's heterosexual masculine energy is so strong that it loops back around to being one of the most homosexual anime trying to pass as heterosexual manga I've ever seen in my life, and Baki is so manly man heterosexual that you can tell someone is trying to compensate for something, surprisingly enough, these two series would work really well together. Dororo and Demon Slayer Dororo is the story about a boy named Hyakimaru whose entire body was nearly completely consumed by demons because his father traded his son's life for peace and agriculture in his failing village to demons. 14 demons in the anime and something like over a hundred in the manga. And the only reason Hyakimaru didn't die is divine intervention by Buddha or something. Anyway. A small child named Dororo tags along with Hyakimaru, and that's basically where the namesake comes from is from his little sidekick. The reason why I think Dororo would work well with Demon Slayer is that both series are about characters with sibling bonds who want revenge for what specific demons did to their lives. For Tanjiro Utsumuzan Kibutsuji for murdering his whole family and turning Nezuko into a demon, and for Dororo it's Hyakimaru for like, literally all demons. Although Dororo takes place in the 1400s and Demon Slayer in the 1920s, this does benefit Hyakimaru in this case since his prosthetics would actually be historically accurate in this case since prosthetics in the 1400s were mostly from Europe such as England and parts of Spain. At least from my very quick research here solely because I thought it would be a little too ridiculous to then go on a tangent about prosthetics so... I mean, not that 1920s prosthetics were anything like they are today, but I found a few examples online that actually look like Hyakimaru's prosthetics in the anime, so hey, I say it works here. Except in this case, I don't think the demons would have ate his skin because that's gross, and realistically, a newborn baby with the immune system of a wet piece of toilet paper wouldn't actually survive without their skin, so let's just say that Hyakimaru's father gave his son's body parts to a bunch of demons for similar reasons. Maybe a demon has the blood demon art to make crops grow? Hey, it's demons and demon slayer, so who knows. With his only remaining body part being his leg, and they probably still ate his eyes, Hyakimaru's story could still play out the same of being found by a man who had to execute and torture people, except this time maybe he was a demon slayer who felt really guilty about being one? The story plays out the same where he trains Hyakimaru, gives him his name, probably teaches him a breathing technique, and sends him on his merry way to get revenge for what demons did to him. Maybe Hyakimaru could still get his body parts back if a demon had the blood demon art for it because, again, so far in the anime, blood demon art sounds like it's a lot more expansive and fantastical than breathing techniques. He'd probably still quote see the way the blind man in Dororo explains it where he can kind of just see the soul of a person and thus Hyakimaru has a black and white perception of the world around him because of this. So I'd imagine if he met Nezuko, he'd have a black and white reaction instead of an understanding that not all demons are bad. What element would Hyakimaru breathe then? I want to say flame solely because fire seems to be strongly associated with Hyakimaru's will to fight. I mean the opening lyrics for the first anime opening of Dororo literally says give me fire and he's portrayed in flames in the opening a lot so I say it works for him. 
Also because you can't lie to me that an interaction between Rengoku and Hyakimaru would be absolutely wholesome. And hey, Dororo still tags around so we get to keep the title of the series. Overall, Dororo and Demon Slayer work surprisingly well together. Violet Evergarden and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. From one series that made me cry to another. I specified Brotherhood by the way because I don't like the 2003 version of Full Metal Alchemist that much. I've made a video about it but I'd rather not link it because like everyone hates someone who doesn't like the 2003 version apparently. Including someone who made a 2 hour video <laughs> dissecting my thoughts. Anyway. This crossover would be super fun to me because Violet Evergarden and Full Metal Alchemist are actually not that far off in terms of the timeline they're supposed to be in, as well as themes and general technology. Full Metal Alchemist's timeline is supposed to be the early 1900s, while Violet Evergarden's is the 1910s. Pretty close if you want to say that Full Metal Alchemist at its latest takes place around 1905, while Violet Evergarden's story ends around 1910. Now, how Edward and Violet would meet would be pretty tricky, but it'd be interesting if maybe Edward hires Violet to write a letter to Alphonse for him to read in case Edward dies someday trying to get his body back, or a letter for entry for the military or something. I think a letter to Alphonse would be more emotional, but that's just me. This could be one of the million times Edward gets his arm broken so he isn't able to write for that very reason because it'd be the wrong hand and we all know what it's like trying to write with the wrong hand. Obviously Violet's arms would be auto mail in this version which is the same fucking thing as described in the anime series but I mean felt like I should still mention that anyway. This would also mean that Gilbert wasn't a master soldier and likely an alchemist since he was a major and like all the high-ranking members of the military besides Hughes and Full Metal Alchemist are alchemists, so... As for what Gilbert's alchemy would be, I have no idea, but I don't think it's a big deal since Gilbert is dead in this crossover, because damn it, the man should have stayed dead because it ruins all the themes of Violet Evergarden with him coming back to life. Oh, this also means that Gilbert died in Ishval because that just makes the most sense timeline-wise. I think Edward and Violet would get along too. Actually, it'd be cute for Edward to teach Violet about what it means to be your own person and kind of bonding over the fact that they both lost their parents. Since Edward lost his mom and Violet lost Gilbert, who was clearly a father figure to her. At least to me, because Gilbert coming back to life and being a love interest for Violet in the movie was just really gross and unnecessary. Overall, Violet Evergarden is kind of like a spin-off story to Full Metal Alchemist if you think about it, so a crossover with them is honestly perfect. With that, I think that'll be the end of this video. A bit abrupt, but I didn't want to make this video too long, and I feel like four crossovers is pretty good. You guys let me know down below what you think of this video. Are there any anime in this video that you think about crossovers for? As always, let me know down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! If any of you would like to help support my channel in any possible way, my Ko-fi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who'd like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!